Okay, it looks like we had a longer session in the last lecture. So, we will try to make it uh, slightly lesser this time. To begin with, we are looking at uh, advanced method which will increase the rate of convergence of our iteration method. And when we say increase, increase over what we can get with Jacobi method and gauss seidel method. And one of the first methods that was proposed is what is known as the successive over relaxation method. And uh, this method is, uh, it goes together with Jacobi method and gauss seidel method as almost like a basic iterative method, because it is not very different uh, from those methods. So, the idea of this successive over relaxation is that in uh, the general case in an iteration, iterative method, we have some way of determining x k plus 1 uh, from x k and there is an increment, we are in essence incrementing x k by delta x k to get x k plus 1. And we know that in the case of divergent, uh, uh, in the case of convergent schemes and especially in under asymptotic uh, convergence conditions, then we are approaching the solution asymptotically from one side. Okay. So, if you are approaching asymptotically, then that means that we are taking steps, but maybe not taking as big a step as, as can be uh, taken and we are taking small steps. So, if we can increase the step size more than what we think it should be, because we are getting delta x k from, from the uh, equation and the amount of delta x k that we get depends on the iteration matrix p and uh, it also depends on x k. So, that means that delta x k is not constant, the step size is not constant, but we seem to be every time underestimating the step size. So, is it possible to increase it by a factor and thereby over relax it than uh, what we can uh, do and that is the essence of this. So, suppose we write x k plus 1 equal to x k plus omega times delta x k, where delta x k is what we get using our uh, conventional scheme. So, if you put omega equal to 1, then we have no over relaxation. So, we are saying that x k plus 1 is the previous value and whatever your Jacobi method or gauss seidel method predicts this delta x k to be. And we are saying that it is only asymptotically approaching and it is, it can be higher. So, can it be higher by a factor omega? If when you say omega is greater than 1, then you are over relaxing at every step. So, it becomes a successive over relaxation method. So, this relaxation methods are by which you can find uh, delta x k and you are saying that is more than that by a certain amount omega when omega is greater than 1. So, for typical gauss seidel uh, typical problems where you apply gauss seidel method uh, although not in all cases in the case where a is diagonally dominant is a good way of saying it one uh, in such a case you can show that omega can be less than 1 and uh, this uh, modification factor will not affect its property of whether it is converging or diverging. Okay. So, the method will remain convergent as long as omega is between 0 and 2 and if it is less than 0 or greater than 2, then it may diverge. Okay. So, that means that we can take any value between these and uh, typically when omega is less than 1, you say it is under relaxation. When omega is greater than 1, you say it is over relaxation. So, when omega is greater than 1, you are taking a step size which is greater than what should be taken as per the Jacobi method or the gauss seidel method. When omega is less than 1, you are saying that it should be less than what it should be taken, what is estimated. If you are trying to speed up the rate of convergence, speed up that number of uh, steps that are required to get to your objective of getting closely, close enough to the true value then you would like an over relaxation omega to be greater than 1. Okay. But if you suspect 
for example, this delta x k estimate itself is subject to errors because you are solving a set of equations and uh, um, you are making assumptions about because of coupling or nonlinearity, you are making assumptions about what is the delta x k. That is, when you are trying to solve nonlinear algebraic equations or a set of equations, then you could say for the sake of safety, for the sake of convergence, you could say that I will under relax, I will not take the full value that is predicted, I will only take part of the value. So, then you could say that I will take omega to be between 0 and 1, you will be under relaxing. But here our A x equal to b is a linear equation, linear algebraic equations and we do not have to worry about under relaxation, we can definitely use over relaxation and when A is diagonally dominant, we can take omega to be anything between 1 and 2 and we can do that over relaxation. So, once you put a, a, a put a value to uh, omega here, then given that you have delta x k determined by Jacobi method or whatever method. So, if you use gauss seidel method, this is equivalent to saying that x k equal to m x x k plus 1 equal to m x k minus 1 plus n in, in that m is d by omega minus e and uh, n is 1 minus omega by omega times d plus f, where d is the diagonal terms of A and E is the those terms which are below the diagonal and f are the terms which are above the diagonal. So, the, the with this notation for a given A in A x equal to b, you can directly find m and n as per the gauss seidel method with this extra factor omega which is added and we take for over relaxation omega to be between 1 and 2. So, this will give us an iteration scheme like this. So, now you have x k plus 1 equal to d by omega minus e inverse of uh, uh, this whole thing here and what we would like to say is that in this case, if you put this as x k plus 1 equal to p x k plus q, this p here is different from the p that you have with G s with the gauss seidel method. What it means is that its convergence rate is affected by the change that you are making and the change that you are making is omega here. If you take omega to be 1, then this thing will go to 0 and you will have d by uh, 1 is d and you will get back to gauss seidel method. If omega is greater than 1, then you have extra influence of uh, the diagonal elements here and uh, uh, these things here. So, that will mean that you have an iteration matrix which is different from what you have with uh, the gauss seidel method and therefore, it will have a different uh, 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 convergence behavior. Okay. Now, although we are uh, putting it like this in terms of these inverses, as before as in the case of Jacobi method and gauss seidel method, we do not do matrix inversion directly. This whole thing can be written just like we wrote in the uh, gauss seidel method except that we put this a11 x1 k plus 1 here and then we have this a11 x1 k minus omega times this whole thing and what is an omega times a11 x1 k plus a12 x2 play that is all the elements at the previous time step minus b1 and this whole thing is minus b1 so this is it will be b 1 times omega minus this value and uh, plus this value here. And similarly for x 2 k, it is a 2 2 x 2 k minus omega times this whole thing, where since we know x 1 as the updated value, we make use of the updated value. So, as far as evaluating as per the success of over relaxation is concerned, we are adding one multiplication here omega times uh, uh, this and then this is uh, uh, okay, we can depending on how it is computed, it is either already computed or it is there and this gives a subtraction. So, and then this whole thing is divided by a 11. So, I can see as a result of this uh, maybe one or two more multiplications per equation and since you have equation here is uh, like that for a sparse matrix, you have only a certain number of non-zero components here. The total number of arithmetic operations 
to go from step k to step k plus 1 is not very different from that for Jacobi or Gaussian method and it varies as maybe 10 or 7 n like that compared to 5 n for the case of uh, Gauss-Seidel method or Jacobi method. So, despite putting this extra factor here, we are only increasing the number of uh, arithmetic operations by uh, n in this. So, it becomes an instead of a factor of 5, you now have a factor of uh, 6 or 7 depending on how you compute it uh, here and uh, that makes it readily implementable, as easily implementable as the Gauss-Seidel method or Jacobi method. So, in a way it is a small extension to, uh, to the Gauss-Seidel method and just as Gauss-Seidel method can be considered as a small extension to the Jacobi method. So, these are all in the same family with the same kind of uh, approach for solution. Now, what does it do to the uh, convergence rate? We have said that as long as this omega is between 0 and 2 whether it diverges or converges is uh, not changed, okay. convergence is assured, but at what rate? Now, the rate of convergence is depends as before on the spectral radius of the new iteration matrix, so that is involving all these omegas and uh, it cannot be computed for the general case, okay. for any case of A that may be resulting from uh, uh, the discretization uh, like this, okay. but for the specific case of A symmetric and positive definite, okay. so then optimum value of omega, so the idea is that this omega varies between uh, 1 and 2 for the case of over relaxation, but the rate of convergence does not vary monotonically between 1 and 2, it typically it goes through a minimum uh, uh, or the number of uh, iterations needed to reduce the residual by a factor of 10, that value which we are saying is the asymptotic convergence rate. It reduces as omega is increased, it goes to a minimum and then it starts again coming back up. So, that means that there is an optimum value of omega at which for a given uh, uh, A matrix and uh, for a given uh, S or method, there is an optimum value uh, uh, for which you will have the least number of uh, iteration steps needed to reduce the residual by a factor of 10. So, it will have the highest convergence rate. Okay. That what the optimum value is not known a priori, okay. but for the specific case of when A is symmetric and positive definite, then the optimum value for gauss seidel method of SOR, okay, where delta x k is determined as per the gauss seidel method is given by this uh, uh, expression here, where uh, so this is 2 divided by 1 minus 1 minus rho square uh, square root, okay, square root of 1 minus rho square and what is this rho? It is rho is the spectral density of the optimum uh, value of uh, optimum iteration matrix uh, uh, thing. Okay. So, where, where the Jacobi SOR is uh, optimal and uh, for when this is known, when the optimal value of uh, omega is known, then the spectral radius is defined as omega optimal minus 1. Okay. So, this is the spectral radius for the optimal value of gauss seidel SOR and this itself depends on the spectral radius of this. For the specific case of Laplace equation with Dirichlet boundary conditions, we know all these things. We know the eigenvalues and we know everything about it and the spectral radius of the Jacobi transformation is cosine pi by m. Therefore, the optimum value uh, of omega, the over relaxation parameter for the gauss seidel SOR scheme is given by 1 by uh, 2 by 1 plus sin pi by m which is roughly equal to 2 times 1 minus pi by m and therefore, the spectral radius is given by this minus 1. So, that gives us uh, 
1 minus 2 pi by n. Okay. Now, what does how does this compare with the previous values? For the previous value, for the GS scheme, we had rho GS as 1 minus pi square by m square. And what do we have here? We have 1 minus 2 pi by m. And what is significant is that in the case of the spectral radius for Gauss Seidel, it is pi square by m square and here it is m and what is m? m is the number of divisions in the x direction and n the number of equations is the number of divisions in the x direction times the number of divisions in the y direction because that gives you the total number of grid points. So, in the case where the number of divisions in the x direction and y direction are the same, this m is equal to square root of n. Okay. Whereas, in the case of uh, Gauss Seidel method without SR, m is uh, you had m square here, so it is proportional to n. Now, what does that mean? That for large m, this 2 pi by m square, 2 pi by m is smaller than pi square by m square. Okay. So, that means that and the spectral radius here is 1 minus this value. So, if this value is higher, then the spectral radius is smaller. Okay. When spectral radius is smaller, the rate of convergence is faster. So, for large values of m, therefore, we can expect the uh, successive over relaxation method of the Gauss Seidel thing to be faster than what it is for uh, the, the simple Gauss Seidel method. Okay. So, for large value of m and in the asymptotic limit, the number of iterations required to reduce error or residual by an order of magnitude varies as square root of n, where n is the number of uh, equations or number of grid points and the total number of arithmetic operations required to reduce error by a factor of 10 varies as n raised to power 3 by 2 or n to the power 1.5 and this value varies as n square for Gauss Seidel method. Okay. So, that means that the arithmetic number of multiplications or divisions is reduced from a constant times n square to constant times n to the power 1.5 okay, or square root of n cubed. How significant is it? If you take million grid points, okay, then n square is million square, so 10 to the power 12 and n to the power 1.5 is million times square root of million, so that is 10 to the power 3, so that is 10 to the power 9. So, that means that instead of taking 10 to the power 12 number of multiplications, you are taking 10 to the power 9 number of multiplications. So, that is a multiplicative factor of 1000. So, that means that SR method is almost 1000 times faster than, than the uh, 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 non SOR Gauss Seidel method. Okay. So, that is the kind of computation advantage we can get if we were using the optimal value of omega okay. and the optimal value of omega is known only for certain special cases. If you want to find out for the true case, then you have to do much more and you have to know all the eigenvalues and the determination of eigenvalues for a general matrix itself will take n cube number of op uh, mathematical operations. Okay. So, that means that we cannot look at uh, uh, we cannot say that let us take the matrix and let us find the eigenvalues and then try to choose try to find the best uh, uh, optimal value all that is not possible because eigenvalue determination is take uh, itself will take n cube number of uh, operations. Okay. So, that is why only for certain class of problems under certain cases, we know it is a convergence rate and we know that it can converge very fast okay, by uh, uh, a significant margin compared to the Gauss Seidel method. So, in the general case, the optimum value of omega changes with A with uh, the matrix uh, and, and so one may need to estimate numerically. So, that is you, you do uh, for 50 iterations and you see by how much by what factor the uh, residual has uh, uh, decreased. 
uh, for a given value of omega. For example, you take omega to be 1.5 and now you do another 50 with omega equal to 1.6 and see whether that uh, uh, residual uh, reduction factor has uh, uh, increased or decreased. Okay. If the residual reduction factor rate is decreased that is if it has taken you uh, if uh, the amount of uh, reduction is more than what you had with 1.5. So, then that means that maybe you can go to 1.7 and then you keep on going uh, like that until you you hit the reverse trend. So, that is now you take 1.8 and you find that it has not reduced in the 50 iterations by as much as it has reduced with the value of 1.7. So, then the optimal value is between 1.7 and 1.8. So, now you take you do another 50 iterations with 1.75 and then try to locate that kind of thing and then you can finally, get an estimate if not the exact value you can get an estimate value of this and then use that value to continue to drive the residuals down to your desired value. So, that is how you can uh, make use of this, but all this is in a way theoretical because it takes certain number of uh, iterations before you can get into the asymptotic convergence limit and it is under the asymptotic convergence limit will you have good success with the determination of the optimal value. So, the overall margin may not be like 1000 fold it may be like 10 fold it may be like 5 fold, but still it is definitely worth it. So, SOR method is a simple extension of uh, the gauss seidel method and uh, for the class of Laplace type of equations, Poisson type of equations, diagonal dominant conditions, it is it can be used very quickly, very effectively to improve the rate of convergence. In the next lecture, we will look at other methods having different kinds of philosophies for increasing the rate of convergence over these basic methods. Thank you.